It is an absolute pleasure for me today to be interviewing the wonderful Max Boughton, who is the founder of IQ Capital, and he has had 15 years of experience in venture capital and uh, currently sits on several boards, including Thought Machine, Audio Analytic, Fluid Analytics, I'm sure, Fluidic Analytics, I'm sure I could go on, and is also an elected member of the Invest Europe Venture Capital Council and a treasured board member of Cambridge University on entrepreneurs so thank you so much for coming on today max it's it's my absolute pleasure thank you very much for having me anytime so the first question that i would like to ask you is what originally got you onto your entrepreneurial journey uh well serendipity i guess um uh, in my case um so um i didn't really have any examples of entrepreneurship in the family um, except maybe for my grandma, but uh, they never really thought of myself as being an entrepreneur. In fact, I wanted to be a pilot in my life, I think. But um, <laughs> I kind of figured out by my teenage years that, um, um, uh, you know, pilot, being a pilot is more of a hobby. So, um, uh, and, and that's something that, you know, I, I kind of need to figure a way to make money. So I went, um, I, I went into economics and kind of business studies. Uh, but then, um, what got me going was um, uh, my first job, uh, which was quite an unusual uh, entity at the time. Um, uh, and that was a company that was building mobile operators from scratch. So they would get a license in predominantly in the developing world um, and then would send a bunch of uh, a few people and, and some equipment, some money to actually build that business and, and so that you know we could recruit the team and everything else. So at the tender age of like 24, I was I was sent as sort of part of five to create one of those operators. And and I went through that journey from, from a complete scratch to a few hundred people uh, and then did it a couple of times again um, at slightly later stages. Um, so uh, when I came to Cambridge back in 2000 to do my MBA, um, I, I sort of caught on the, um, the, that startup bug, I guess. And, um, uh, and that was, you know, back in 2000, you know, very hot, of course, from the dot-com boom, technology was everywhere. And mm. um, notwithstanding the fact that um, by the time that I finished, which was September 2001, 9-11, and all of those wonderful things, uh, <laughs> yeah. that was a great... Um, that was a great timing, but um, I luckily bumped into into a local entrepreneur, Nigel Brown, who uh, set up a, large, a relatively large asset management firm, and they had a big um, um, operation by then. Uh, in they had an angel network, they had a VC fund, and they were building uh, sort of a seed stage funding activity. And and again, largely through serendipity, I fell into that and 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 started. Um, um, you know, raise some money and, and started making investments uh, there at, at seed stage, and that's uh, and that's mm. and that's when I got most of my bumps and um, you know learned learned the, the lessons of, of largely understanding that you know I didn't really know much about technology despite what I originally thought. So um, mm. that was my journey into into the kind of into the world of venture, I guess, and and then it culminated with um, two of my partners and I. Uh, creating IQ Capital back in 2006 and, and raising um, our first fund there and, and then, you know, building on from that, which took a few years, but mm. uh, it's still going, but it, it's been a fantastic journey, actually. Yeah, that's, that's pretty incredible. The, the interesting thing about the entrepreneurial journey is it's very rocky and it's very up and down. And I'm curious to know, so you said you caught the startup bug. Like, yeah. what excites you about startups? Why was that such an exciting world to you? And then why did you decide, okay, let's let's found a VC firm and uh, continue the progression of startup growth? I, I, you know, it's, um, well, I mean, being an entrepreneur and, and being a venture investor is not quite the same thing, um, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, uh, even though most VCs would like to think otherwise. Um, but um, the, as an, I, I think the from the entrepreneurial perspective, what I find absolutely amazing is is the is the speed of the journey, and and the immediacy of uh, you know the feedback loop is very short. You know you you are either successful or not, um, 
there's a lot of dynamism, there's a lot of positive energy, there's a lot of kind of camaraderie and everything else. And that's all amazing. I mean, obviously, the troughs of that are very, very hard as well. Um, but, you know, as society, I think we're beginning to understand um, a little bit better how to deal with failure uh, more and, and it's stopping. It, it's no longer a problem either. You know, it just seemed to be a, a great um, a great career path and increasingly people people do start companies right out of university and, and, and that's, you know, um, uh, if you look at what happens in the Valley, I mean, it's, 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 it's much more accepted than going and working for a consultancy firm or even a big tech startup. Um, mm. So, um, but uh, the, um, and, and, and that's why, um, you know, um, I'm not sure if I would have made a great example of a tech entrepreneur myself or an entrepreneur in any industry because, I mean, ultimately, even though I have had the experience, it wasn't really a new business, you know. I mean, ultimately, telecoms business is relatively simple, you know. You, you get... It's, it, you have lots of interesting elements, but you know you have a license, and that essentially is your barrier to entry because there's going to be only two or three players in that area. And then you go out mm-hmm. and you roll your network, and it's about you know technical excellence. And then you do some marketing, and you do you know it, it's like there's not really it's not rocket science, you know. Um, so mm-hmm. whether I would be able to succeed as an entrepreneur in a in a in a sort of startup technology um, driven startup uh, where there's much more uncertainty, you know, I mean I'm, I'm uh, I would have I would have seen it, but the um, and who knows? Probably not. Mm. You know, I mean, I absolutely admire the the guys that we back uh, for for just how versatile they are, how much energy they bring, how fast they're able to learn uh, areas that they don't understand. But um, what I've learned to to enjoy a lot is actually becoming you know partnering with this with these entrepreneurs, and I do see it as partnering rather than investing because we become effectively a co-founder of the business from very, very early on. And, and we try to stay all the way to the exit. And, and in doing so, um, it's, it's trying to be relevant. It's trying to be helpful. It's trying to bring something to the company that the company needs other than money. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. and, and that's a bit that, and, and having a few of those, I find incredibly intellectually stimulating. All companies go through different stages. They're in different areas. They're all exploring unknown barriers um, but at the same yeah. time a lot of the challenges that they have are very similar in terms of you know scaling um, management um, you know product market fit yeah. marketing and all of those good things um, they are actually quite repeatable and and so that's that's yeah that's 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 us yeah it sounds like you never get bored you know even though the the processes are the same and the departments that you need are kind of the same and the scaling process are perhaps very similar you're always in unknown fields there's always something new going on everything's at a different stage so it most definitely sounds like you could never get bored boring it is not i, I genuinely think that yeah. venture capital for my for my personality i think venture capital is the best job in the world you know it, it's, mm. a, it's, a, it's just just doesn't get any better you know it's it's mm-hmm. it's rewarding from every perspective and and thankfully as an industry we finally also figured out how to actually make some money from that so you know years ago i i, I would have said yeah it's amazing but actually you know it's probably not the most fantastic career path because you know can you really be financially successful but but you know in in the current day and age uh, that that comes as a, as a as a side effect, and again, from the societal perspective, the um, the economic impact that, that the technology startups are making, and you know, and the providers of services, and I would put venture capital largely into that category. Ultimately, we are selling cash, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and probably a little bit more of of advice on the side, um, which um, some people do well and some people don't do well, but. Um, uh, you know that, that's that's incredibly important because um, I mean it's still it's still it's still difficult to measure it as a percentage of the GDP, but it's 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 definitely growing, and and you could see how you could see the importance of the technology stock market and technology industry around the world, and just how strong it has been as a trend since the 50s, and and overtaking just about everything else that has happened in the society over that time, and so I'm 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 a big believer and, and incredibly excited about what technology can do for the society and going forward resolve some of the biggest problems that we have as well. So it's not just about money and the economics. It's mm. about 
solving sustainability, and that's the only that's the only way that we can solve that. You know, we can't clean up our uh, planet because people's behavior is not going to change. So the only way that they can do it is 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 through continued technological innovation. And I hope we can move that fast enough before before we kill the planet, um, <laughs> which is scary. But you know, the, the, yeah. Uh, but, Before but also, we all destroy ourselves, a lot, a lot of societal, um, other societal and social challenges, and you know the impact of AI, for example, and and seeing uh, so many industries that are likely to change as a result, and therefore we as a society will become more productive, and therefore hopefully we'll be able to cater for some of the social needs better, and and, and so on and so forth. So it's. It, it, it's it's by far the most um, exciting and important frontier that we as as uh, humanity are uh, are progressing on, and and uh, from my perspective anyway, and uh, and I feel very excited about where it's going to lead, to lead us. And I haven't even touched on the longevity, on on the medicine, and 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 sustainable living, and all of those other fantastic trends. Yeah, I think the possibilities of technology are, you know, infinite. They seem to be boundless. And the fact that we're going to have machines replacing a lot of these lower level jobs is going to enable humans to focus on those higher leverage activities that you were talking about. One thing, one question I'm interested in asking, just going back to the venture capital side, is when you want to make an investment decision about who to invest in, what is the thought process that goes through your head? What things do you look out for? So um, those decisions are slightly different depending on what stage you invest because the data points are different for a seed stage company or a Series A or a Series B company, for example. Um, but um, if we are looking at, to invest at seed stage, um, and, and we are a very unusual vehicle um, or entity. We are a deep tech driven fund. We invest in companies that have a, a very big technological mode around the proposition that these businesses have. So there's typically some sort of a core invention. Um, so first and foremost, we actually look at the technology and, and whether or not that excites us. You know, is that one of the best things in the world? What's the insight of the founder team into that particular space? How qualified are they top global talent to succeed in that space or not? Um, mm. uh, from the technological perspective, can they build the product? But then, and then we start looking at, at, you know, do we believe that the market for this could be substantial and, and either enabled by this technology or it's already a big opportunity that you are addressing? Um, it's um, it's uh, and and whether or not the team is 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 somebody that we will have a fit with um, because that's another big thing. It's a long journey and it's it's uh, finding finding a fit because you, you know you will it, it's almost you know you will have to live together. It's it's a bit like marriage, you know, for for the next seven ten years where you will have to not just be productive working together, but you have to be comfortable just listening to each other and respecting each other and, and enjoying the time together. Because, you know, I mean, ultimately, that's that's the reason why we all go into that journey. So, um, so these are probably the kind of three core things that we'll look at at seed mm. stage. And by, by later stage, we then add um, the, you know, the kind of the custom attraction, what evidence exists, you know, is the business model working? Um, probably a little bit more science on the market size and the likely market share that the company can, 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 can build. So, um, mm. yeah, but you know, that's not terribly unusual. I mean, most VCs would say they look at the founder first and for us, uh, we'll look at the technology first and the founder, you know, we kind of say that, you know, if you have technology is easy to, uh, to assess, um, objectively, um, whereas, Founder teams mm. are much harder to define. Um, John Moulton always said that um, you know defining uh, defining a bad manager is easy, defining a good manager is very hard. And 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 you know when you're working with a bunch of PhDs um, uh, setting up their first company, how do you know whether they will make good entrepreneurs or not? Uh, but what you can do, and that's what we focus on, is seeing the worrying signs. You know when we feel that we can't get on, when people don't don't want to listen um, or don't feel you feel that they are probably not going to scale into 
in the leaders, these are the sorts of things, or, or, or we just don't, don't get on, you know, maybe as personalities, maybe as styles, you know, that's, that's the reality of life, you know, not everybody can get on with everybody. And, 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 and this would be one of the reasons why we would say no, we just don't think that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting approach that like you look at the technology you see, is it good? Is the product good? What's the potential of this? Is there going to be demand for this? And then you look at the person because it's like you're in, you're investing in both, right? You're investing in the technology and the idea and the implementation of the idea, but then you need someone who's going to be able to implement it well. And I, I think it's interesting how you say it's very difficult to define a good manager or to spot who is actually going to be a success. I'm curious to know if, you know, someone comes to you for seed funding, mm -hmm. what kind of qualities do you look for in that person and how can they make a good impression? Um, we, uh, I mean, obviously versatility, ability to learn, ability, ability to listen, um, um, uh, and, and make their own judgment. Um, um, so rather than being affected by, all kinds of advisors that they're going to get, including on their boards. Uh, but what's also incredibly important is the team dynamics. So we'll look at, at, at how people get along in the company. Are there, um, you know, are there clear, clear leaders who are dominating, perhaps too much dominating? You know, how does that, that, that all work? Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so again, um, at, at this stage, you know, we sort of say um, a brilliant, um, it takes a brilliant person to make a brilliant invention, right? So, you know, if you have made a brilliant invention, it goes without saying that you're brilliant. But you might not be brilliant in terms of being able to build a business. So when we're assessing the founder teams, we'll look at, at their ability to, to go on that journey. Because, you know, a startup is not a company. It's, it's a process. And, mm. and that founder team uh, uh, scale with the process and learn. And uh, and surround themselves with the people who have probably know better. So ideally, you want to see every every new employee who is better than than the founders in that particular field. Uh, and and if the founders don't have mm. that ability to accept that that's the only way that the company can develop, that would be a very worrying sign because you know kind of um, the in, that's typically a sign of insecurity and 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 wanting to hold it all to yourself. So that's. Um, that's that. That's probably how we think about teams. Yeah. So it's like a question of okay, they have the technological acumen now. Now, can they learn fast? Do they have the business acumen? Do they have the people skills and the leadership skills to be able to manage a team and then scale all of that up? That's really interesting. I'm curious to change the conversation back to you for a sec. Would is there, Would you say throughout your career, whether it was back in entrepreneurship, back in the day, or in venture capital, is there one skill throughout the, the, your career that really moved the needle for you? Or are there a couple of skills that you can sort of pinpoint that to? Um, well, I, I, I think um, an incredibly important skill um, for a VC, and, 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 and I've certainly found it very important, is, is humility. You, you, you have to... Um, you have to understand that, um, you know, and kind of emotional intelligence, you know, you have to, you have, ultimately, we are nurturers, we are helping companies, entrepreneurs do an incredibly hard job, which is emotionally and physically draining. And, uh, and, and we are trying to bring in as much as we can on the support side to actually help them, not through just the good times, but through the bad times as well, be it personally or professionally. And, and, mm -hmm. and therefore, the ability to, to, just, to just, well, first of all, know that, that you are there to help uh, and, and that's your role. That's your only role, really. Uh, and secondly, and that's the only way that works. And, but then also to sort of to feel for the founders and to really be, to really deeply be um, on on their side, so that so that you have first and foremost their interest in mind, because in the longer term, that's again the only way that we can all maximize the outcomes. That's 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 mm -hmm. very important. Knowing that you don't know better, and and you know, I, I think in in this country actually, we, we as an industry have gone through uh, a pretty interesting uh, transition because 
venture capital started as a sort of spin-off from banking and private equity, uh, the buyout funds that existed for the la- later stage. And, 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 and the early days of, you know, there were exceptions like Herman Hauser but, um, and Amadeus, but by and large, VCs were, were kind of ex-bankers slash private equity players. And, and, and they just didn't bring the right set of skills or the right attitudes. It was, it was always sort of, you know, white male dominated, I know better, you know, I am the, I'm, I'm the master, you're the slave type of attitude. And, and that is just awful, you know, this, and uh, it took, mm. it's so great to see that it has now changed and we see more and more entrepreneurs who are investors who've been there, done that, um, or at least funds that, that integrate that, that ethos into, deep into their uh, DNA. So, and that's, um, yeah, so. Mm. Yeah, it seems like it's really important that you drop your ego, like the ego has absolutely no place in that kind of environment. And it kind of goes back to what you were originally saying about, you know, we see them as partners, and it's a partnership. And it's something where we're working together, and everyone contributes to move this forward. So I think that's a really interesting insight. Emotional intelligence is, is definitely very important. Um, I guess my next question for you would be, was, did, is there like a big failure or mistake that you made in your career at some point, whether it was in venture capital or entrepreneurship, that taught you a really important lesson? I mean, one thing I find really interesting is what you were saying back in the startup space, it's very fast and you fail fast, fail forward, fail smart. And there's a lot of feedback and a lot of implementation. So I know it's a journey of failing forward, but does anything stand out to you in particular? Um, well, I mean, I've, I've, I've had um, plenty of, um, plenty of failures as an investor. Um, and, um, you know, to a certain extent, um, you know, the first, the first, um, you know, my first 10 years in venture, so between 2001 and 2012, I would say, were, were really hard and, 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 you know, slower than I would have liked, certainly in retrospect, um, partly for objective reasons, partly for subjective reasons, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably did a few, a few mistakes in terms of understanding how to scale our own business, how to convince investors and, 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 and so on and so forth, create the track record and what they were expecting. Um, mm. but, um, but also, you know, um, the, 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 uh, the lessons from the companies that didn't work out are, of course, incredibly important. And, you know, we haven't, uh, we haven't really had um, outright fraud um, in, in businesses, but we've certainly had a few instances of... Um, of managers that were not completely um, transparent and, and, and truthful in, in terms of what was going on, uh, you know, and, and, and then, you know, there's good reasons to fail and there's bad reasons to fail and, and, and good reasons to fail uh, is, you know, lack of product market fit. You know, you're operating in uncertainty, you, you give it a go. And if it turns out that, you know, that you, you got it wrong and the space doesn't exist or it doesn't develop fast enough, then that's fine, you know, and, and you move on. Um, I, think, I think the bad reason to fail for an investor are reasons that you should have, should have been able to see through and, and should have either been able to, to guess that the market wouldn't exist, but more importantly, it's things like skeletons in the closet, you know, the sorts of things that are relatively easy to find uh, and for whatever reason you didn't. And that's when you feel that you failed on your job as an investor or you have failed um, in an area where you could have helped the company to either avoid or mitigate a particular mistake and, and or supported them through sorting it and you didn't quite do do a, a, a good job there. So these this are the ones that, 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 that hurt uh, and, mm-hmm. and that's where you learn most from. Um, just, yeah. yeah, it's like when you know, oh, if only I had done that due diligence better or if only I had paid more attention or if only I hadn't ignored that red flag that is glaringly obvious in hindsight that makes a lot of sense uh, that makes a lot of sense and those those experiences are definitely the most teaching because you feel like wow I could have done something about that but then you make sure like the next time I'm, I'm not going to make the same mistake again uh, and um, actually the the thing about venture capital certainly multi-stage venture capital that we practice now 
um, is is that again it's a journey. I mean uh, the uh, we are very very happy to make well very happy. We're very open minded to making mistakes with seed stage investments and and even seri Series A investments. We expect a fairly significant percentage of these companies to never quite make it and and never quite making it it does include technology exits to corporates and we see a lot of those uh, and this could well be the best outcome for a company that is struggling to find their own feet and product market um, mm. um uh, fit and 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 um more uh, scaling um um and you know, for us, um, accepting that okay, something hasn't worked out, uh, and we step back. Uh, it, it, it's as long as you do that at the right stage. And for example, you feel that look, maybe it's not the time to do to do the CSA. I um, you know, we try to be supportive and actually always advance the next check anyway. But it, it, you know, the, there could be there's a difference between that check being multi-million or just being a few hundred thousand, where you are just saying. Look, you know, I'm probably not going to be. It's probably not going to be the journey that I could support you on. But fundamentally, the next 12 months, uh, we're prepared to help so that you can so that you can transition your business in the appropriate way, uh, whichever way that might be, be it new investors or be it you know some some alternatives. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and again, from an investor perspective, where where it hurts a lot is when uh, is when you don't see those signs. Uh, it's very difficult to see them during due diligence. I guess that was my point. You know, for us, yeah. our, our due diligence is the next two years since we've given you the first check. Um, mm -hmm. That's when we really get to learn a lot about companies and, and, and their teams. And, and again, when we get that bit wrong, that, that's, that's the bit where, where we feel that we haven't done a terribly good job. Because the, the more money you invest in the later stage the company is, the, obviously, the, the, the the last you should expect it not to work out. And, uh, yeah. Model. Yeah, most definitely. It sounds, it sounds like that screening process and that due diligence is is very long and arduous and things things come up all the time uh, along that period of time. Uh, that was really, really interesting, Max. Thank you. I'm curious to know, more talking about you personally now, mm. do you have any mindsets or habits or rituals that keep you sharp? Or that keep you on the top of your game? Um, well, again, actually, that's that's a very good question because um, that's incredibly important to 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 keep mm. to keep growing yourself because you know um, well, that's the industry um, that is that is growing. You know, I try to listen to um, to to uh, and well, read and listen to to other practitioners in this area, both entrepreneurs and investors. There's a lot of a lot of blogs out there I try to try to read up uh, the, the great news today i mean you know t twitter sphere is, is incredibly um informative on how people are thinking and, and where things are going um so th that's the great thing uh, of today um there's a lot of the information out there um the key trouble is finding the time and finding the right filters to be able to to see it and to learn from it and find and forcing yourself to do that and you know i have a bunch of you know to, um tricks to, mm. to make sure that i have that in my um in my arsenal and and, and it doesn't get trumped by other things which are more urgent for whatever reason so mm -hmm. do you care to share some of those tricks with us uh, well, uh, you know, one easy one is is that um, I, I I listen to sort of a lot of books and blogs and and and, and podcasts um, when I I don't know cycle or when I run or when I drive. Um, it's it's kind of finding finding those gaps of of you know semi dead time where you can't really do anything else. But but a you make sure you do because again keeping yourself. Uh, healthy is very important from from you know work balance perspective the energy the uh, the positivity uh, but also that that gives you that gives you a wonderful time to to actually think and reflect um, I love reading and and again you know whenever I have a time uh, to just pull out the Kindle and, and and do a bit of reading wherever wherever I am I I, I really enjoy doing that so it's it's yeah. it's kind of building the discipline uh, into into your life and you know and you know well being more broadly you know what you eat and you know how you behave um to yourself 
is actually, you know, are the building blocks and, you know, uh, trying to not quite watch as much of Netflix and rather do something useful uh, when you are, when you're in bad, because, you know, even an hour a day makes a big difference. So, um, but it's, it's, it's doing it in such a way that, that, you know, naturally fits into your routines. And that's what I try to do. Yeah, I totally agree. That's something that I do as well. And even just that hour a day or even half an hour, a day whatever it is that you're learning about or trying to accomplish that compounds over time so if you stay consistent you know one month from now the gains that you have are going to be so much greater than if you had done absolutely nothing at all and i definitely agree if you're in the investor space if you're in the entrepreneurial space making sure that you have good information in your head is key so you can make those good decisions and understand how other people are thinking and understand how the greats thought about various different topics that can then inform your own worldview and, and business view. So that's very interesting. And also the stuff on energy management, if you don't, if you neglect your health, your, your business is going to start to, to crumble as well because they, they're very interrelated and they, they both have an effect on each other. So that's really, really interesting. I guess my last question for you, Max, then is, what would you say are three key truths about the entrepreneurial journey that you would share with a young entrepreneur today? Um, uh, a failure, a failure is not a problem. You know, um, mm. just um, that's you need to think about entrepreneurship as a as a learning opportunity uh, first and foremost, and 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 it's very valuable uh, from that perspective. It's it's the quickest way to learn um, a whole bunch of things. Um, mm. It is not easy uh, and you have to make significant compromises um, as it goes along. And one of the challenges of doing, of becoming an entrepreneur earlier before you have the family, for example, uh, uh, is, is, is that it tends to put everything into the second gear and, and then, you know, um, uh, finding time for children, finding time for meeting your partner becomes much harder and people sometimes people make the mistake of just of just sort of delaying that until you know i'll do that when i build the company to the right stage type of thing and, and that never really comes and i've seen people you know pushing their 50s who all of a sudden kind of realize that oh hold on the life has gone away um so you know it's a balance uh, keep that in mind and and to the extent that you prepare that that you want to make those sacrifices have that timeline uh, in view as well and and from our perspective again um you know we we do want people to have balanced lives uh, and and that's uh, and again i think that's very accepted in the entrepreneur community no an investor community you don't no one is expecting you to work 24 7 but sometimes there's no other way and and and, it, and mm. that time will come where there will be weeks where everyone has to go absolutely crazy because otherwise the business might die and uh, mm. and you need to kind of make those priorities in your in your head um, um number number three is is that there's it's a little bit like with children there's never the right time right and mm. uh, and the first steps are always a bit hard and uh you know, um, it could be serendipitous um, in that you just, you know, I don't know, you get, you know, you, you're made redundant from a job and you always had that idea that you wanted to hack on and, you know, explore and, and then and then when you do that, or you have, or you have some time um, after the university and you want to try your teeth at, you know, for a year or two, just rather than doing a gap year, just building a startup, you know, so it's, um, all of those things are um, uh, work absolutely fine. And, you know, it's, it's, mm. it's a fantastic journey. So, um, and, and one of the best careers that anybody can have. So that's, that's my. I love my that. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much, Max. Do you have anything that you would like to plug to people or where can people find you, find out about IQ Capital? Uh, well, I mean, our, our main office is in Cambridge, so uh, corner of Regent Street and Lancel Road, um, and um, so we're there. We 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 are fairly open, so you know, kind of knock on the door, knock and um, find me through LinkedIn. Um, you know, give us a call, um, whatever, um, and you know, we're fairly we're fairly open and approachable. If you if you have 
a great idea and you want to discuss, always bear in mind that for, for, for VCs, the number of inbound is always greater than the amount of time. So when you can find a warm introduction, um, do and you know and LinkedIn is is great help for that. Um, and also you know just look at people's background, which you know which companies they're involved with, what are they interested in, all of those kinds of things help help to build the bridge. Um, but you know I I see I see work with Cambridge University entrepreneurs and generally in the ecosystem as as as, as an important. Uh, element of what we do, so I'm I'm keen, I'm I'm trying to find time um, to to do that and and you know participate in various programs and 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 that's it. so yeah. The, there's a general um, desire to help, but um, don't get too offended if you can't get through first time out and 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 see what else, what other route can can work. So. Mm-hmm. That's really good advice. That's, that's excellent insight. Well, again, thank you so much, Max, for your time. I found this conversation really interesting and I'm sure many of the viewers slash listeners did too. Um, so thank you very much and I, I hope you have a wonderful day. It's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you.